Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this particular session. So this session is about uh, Delta Lake streaming under the hood and we'll discuss uh, a lot more about structure streaming internals. Myself, uh, Shashidhar, I'm a senior resident solution engineer, part of uh, resident solution architects group in uh, Databricks EMEA. I work out of Databricks office in Netherlands. So let's get started with <clears throat> a sample stream. Uh, so if you take this example stream here, I'm reading from a Delta table and writing to a Delta table uh, with the checkpoint location specified. So whenever you submit this <clears throat> code into Spark execution engine, so what really happens is Spark will uh, read from your source table, process the data and writes it back to your output sync table. And on doing so in each micro batch or in each trigger, it will also track the progress of your streaming job into a location called a uh, checkpoint location that user has specified. And as in when the new data arrives at your source delta table, uh, Spark will keep on ingesting the data incrementally from your source delta table over time and process it and writes it to your output table. So if you think from <clears throat> physical components perspective of a stream, uh, in terms of what really makes you know, the streaming possible, we need to have a source uh, from where uh, you know, Spark can read the input data incrementally. And we need to define a sync where uh, the output has to be you know, uh, stored into. And we also need to specify a checkpoint location where uh, the progress of your streaming query will be persisted as and when the micro batch is processed. Uh, but here we are talking about Delta Lake as a streaming source. Uh, so what is that you know, component of Delta Lake which makes it an efficient streaming source? So the answer is actually a transaction logs or Delta table history. So this is what uh, Spark Structure Streaming APIs will keep on monitoring and also uh, use as a mechanism to read the incre incremental data from your source Delta table and process in a structure streaming fashion. So in this talk, uh, we'll focus on uh, how your transaction logs relate to the checkpoint location contents and how we can use this information to understand what really happens, uh, what is really happening inside your streaming jobs uh, where you are using Delta as a streaming source. So as part of this, uh, there are three different sections I want to you know, uh, go into more details about to understand uh, the correlation between the transaction logs and the checkpoint directory and make it uh, you know, an actionable insight. So uh, here I'm listed three topics like the structure streaming internals, uh, Delta table properties, and uh, what are the common issues that users face and what are the mitigation strategies uh, that we advise for them. So in this particular uh, presentation, we'll focus only on the first aspect, uh, which is nothing but structure streaming internals. So let's get started. So as part of structure streaming internals, um, we will uh, focus on these three things uh, with, of course, Delta as a source and Delta as a sync. So we'll focus on uh, query progress logs, uh, which is nothing but a bunch of metrics that Spark structure streaming will emit after completion of every micro batch. And Next section is about uh, streaming semantics with the Delta Lake. Uh, so here we'll see how we can use the query progress logs and correlate it back to your uh, Delta table history uh, to understand the query progress uh, you know, efficiently and effectively. And finally, we'll also inspect the checkpoint directory itself uh, to see what exactly gets persisted into checkpoint directory and how the information that is inside checkpoint directory correlates back to your query progress logs and also back to your Delta table history. So let's get started with query progress log. So what is a query progress log? So it is nothing but a JSON log, which uh, Spark structure streaming will uh, generate after completion of uh, every micro batch. Uh, 
these are bunch of metrics uh, which gives a lot of uh, execution details about uh, your structure streaming job itself and these are internal metrics uh, even databricks also uses uh, to display the you know insights from your structure streaming queries if you have if you have ever ran uh, structure streaming jobs inside databricks notebooks so this is how it normally looks uh, basically you have two tabs here so one is uh, the dashboard which is on the left hand side uh, where we are picking up some of the key metrics uh, from this json log that we get from spark uh, streaming engine and we'll populate them in a graphical way uh, for users to understand how their stream is behaving but if you really want to see the raw metrics in json format uh, you can uh, look at the right hand side where i'm showing it as uh, click on the raw data and you'll uh, you'll actually see the json itself uh, displayed in the notebook ui so let us see like what are the different type of metrics that we normally see inside these query progress logs at a high level uh, we can divide these metrics into five different categories so first one is micro batch execution uh, so these are set of metrics which describes the micro batch itself uh, so some of the things like what is the id of your streaming query which micro batch it is when did it trigger things like that and then we have uh, another set of metrics called source and sync metrics which represents the state of your source uh, uh, <clears throat> which which you can correlate it back and understand how much uh, of the data has been pulled from the source in that particular micro batch and what exactly went into the sync and on the third we have stream performance metrics so these are some of the key metrics which you can use to understand the behavior of your stream and if needed you can use them to monitor and you know uh, optimize your job uh, if your stream is lagging behind and we also have uh, another set of metrics called batch duration metrics so these give uh, these set of metrics give you the granular details of uh, the time spent on different type of activities in your stream execution. Finally, we also have something called streaming state metrics, where uh, uh, all your state information will be you know, captured in these metrics if you are using any state related operations. So we'll focus on some of these categories, which we'll be using in our demo uh, later. Uh, using which we can correlate between uh, delta table history and the query progress logs. So the first category of metrics are batch execution metrics. So here I have highlighted two key metrics, ID and batch ID. ID is nothing but unique ID, which gets generated for every uh, structure streaming query uh, whenever you start this query. And once it is generated, it is actually persisted inside the checkpoint directory and until you change the checkpoint directory this unique id won't be changed and on the right hand side you can see uh, under the notebook ui i'm highlighting like uh, where you can find the id for any given stream the second metric is batch id which is nothing but the micro batch id so this just represents which micro batch uh, is the query progress logs that you are reading uh, at any given point so on the right hand side bottom, you can see the JSON representation of these two metrics I have highlighted. Of course, there are other metrics, but these are the some key metrics which I'll be using uh, to correlate query progress logs and the delta table history. The next set of metrics are <clears throat> source and sync metrics. So on the right hand side, you can see the JSON, complete JSON of uh, source metrics and sync metric when you're using delta as a source and delta as a sink so as you can see in the sink uh, there is not much other than what exactly is the you know sink uh, delta table location so we'll ignore the sink part and we'll focus only on the source metric side so if you see the source metrics uh, we can divide them at a high level into two different groups one is start offset and end offset uh, start offset as the name suggests it represents the status of uh, of the source delta table at which this particular micro batch has started similarly the end offset represents the uh, status of your uh, the offset of your source delta table at which that micro batch has processed 
So inside these offsets, uh, start offset and end offset, you have three different fields uh, which are important. So one is reservoir version. This is nothing but uh, delta transaction ID uh, for your delta source table at which the micro batch is operating on. The second one is index. Uh, so this represents the file in index inside that given reservoir version or the delta transaction ID. So remember, uh, if you remember the way delta transaction work, so you can have multiple files committed to a delta table at a given transaction. So the index represents each uh, individual file in the transaction. And then we have E starting version, which is actually a Boolean field. Uh, so it will be set to true if your reservoir version represents uh, the transaction ID of your source data table at which this particular st stream has started at the first point. So it can happen like uh, you might start a stream from the delta table where you already had a lot of data. So in those cases, e starting version will be set to true for a long time. But if you're starting from an empty delta table and also the stream, uh, then e starting version uh, will be advanced to false very quickly. And finally, uh, we also have something called number of input rows, which uh, represents how many rows we have ingested in, in that particular micro batch. So next we move to <clears throat> performance metrics. Uh, here I have two other metrics, uh, like input rows per second and process rows per second. So on the right hand side, you can see uh, how we display these metrics inside uh, Databricks Notebook UI. And I'm also showing you the JSON complete values that we get from the uh, structure streaming execution itself. So what input rows per second <clears throat> actually represents is the rate at which the data is getting pulled from your source delta table into the Spark execution engine. It doesn't really represent the rate at which you are ingesting the data into your source delta table. And then we have processed rows per second, which is nothing but the rate at which you are processing the data inside your application, depending on your application code. So as you can see, if the processing rate remains higher than the input rate for uh, a duration of time, maybe a couple of hours or a couple of days, that normally indicates uh, your stream is lagging behind and you might have to go back and figure out like uh, what really happened. Do you have a spike in your input, uh, input data? Uh, so you can adjust your cluster capacity or optimize your job or tune your job to perform or process your input data efficiently. So with these <clears throat> metrics, uh, by understanding this set of metrics, uh, let us go to the next uh, section where it is about streaming semantics with the Delta Lake. So in here, uh, we'll take an example stream and we'll see how the query progress log changes uh, for each micro batch given a source uh, delta table and the table history and we'll understand we'll try to correlate query progress logs and the delta table history so here i have a example stream where i'm reading from a delta table called delta keyval and i'm writing to a uh, delta table called uh, delta stream and i'm having this property uh, called max files per trigger as five, uh, which actually represents a uh, number of files that Spark has to ingest in each micro batch. If you don't specify this, uh, Spark will always uh, fall back to the default value of a thousand. So uh, keep in mind that if you don't use, if you, if you are not even using this, uh, this property is always affecting your uh, stream. And I'm also having a trigger 60 seconds, which uh, by which we are actually telling Spark to trigger each micro batch in every 60 second time. <clears throat> if you don't use this, uh, Spark will fall back to default trigger or what we call as no trigger, where uh, <clears throat> Spark will just start the new micro batch as and when the previous micro batch has finished. And this is also what we call as micro batch mode of execution. So this will be our example uh, streaming job that we'll be using for our demo purpose. Then we have uh, 
delta source table here. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see the data that exists in the source table. Uh, of course, we have three columns here, ID, key and value, but ignore the contents of uh, <clears throat> what exactly they represent. But the main thing you have to keep in mind here is the count, uh, which is 16,384 records are present in this source delta table. And on the right hand side, you can see table history and it shows version zero, uh, which actually means <clears throat> I have committed eight files uh, into this delta table in one write operation. So that is what actually you can observe in the operation matrix uh, on the third column uh, in the table history, where you can see uh, num files equal to eight and num output rows equal to 16384. And at the bottom, I am representing uh, in a more granular way of how the files uh, in a given version are treated for streaming. So here we have version zero and we have eight files, right? So the index for the files will start from zero and ends at seven because we have eight files here. So we'll be using this graphical representation going forward to understand uh, the query progress logs and how it maps to your table history. So we have this source table now <clears throat> and we are having this uh, application code here uh with max files per trigger of five and once we run the <clears throat> uh, micro batch like the after completion of first micro batch you can see we got all the three columns populated uh, so that is expected because we are not doing anything in the stream itself but the interesting thing is if you observe the count of the destination table after first micro batch uh, it shows 10,240 as the count. So let us see uh, from the history perspective what really happened here. So we have a source table history. Uh, if you remember, I was showing it earlier, like version zero having num files eight. And this is the query progress log that we get after execution of first batch. So here, as I was telling earlier about uh, different type of metrics, we have start offset and end offset as you can observe we have start offset of null uh, because uh, this is the first patch so we don't have any start offset and if you see the end offset the reservoir version is zero which exactly maps to the version zero of your uh, source delta table and we also see that e starting version boolean flag is set to true because this is the version at which the stream was initially started uh, if you observe on the top, batch ID is set to zero. And if you also observe number of input rows is 10,240, which represents the count that we saw in the destination table earlier. So if we observe the <clears throat> destination table history after first micro batch, uh, we have two versions. The zero version you can ignore because it's a create table uh, because we are starting the stream to write to empty uh, location. The version one represents the commit, uh, which happened from the structure streaming job. Here you can see number of added files to five and also number of output rows to uh, 10,240, which maps to the 10,240 that we are seeing inside query progress logs. So to understand the index, <clears throat> uh, let's take a step back and uh, let's change the representation of this in more uh, graphical manner. So here I have, query progress logs for the batch zero, batch ID zero. I have start offset and end offset and number of input rows. So these are the same values what I was showing in the previous slide. And on the bottom you have source table history where we have version zero, that is your uh, delta table history of source. And we have zero to seven, that is uh, representing the eight files that we have in our source table. And how can we understand the index for uh, is something like this. As you can see, in first batch, uh, we have ingested file zero to file four because we have earlier set max files per trigger to five and the index four represents the fifth file uh, in version zero of your source delta table. So what really happens in the next batch? <clears throat> so here we have uh, micro batch ID one where now we have the metrics populated for start offset and which which are exactly the same 
as the end offset metrics in the previous patch. So we have index four in the start offset and index seven in the end offset, which uh, technically represents like the file five, six, and seven in your source delta table history. So now you might think we have set max files per trigger to five, but we are processing only three files. So that is because uh, we only have three files yet to be processed. So Spark will just put, pull all the existing files in this micro batch. On the third batch, if you see, <clears throat> both start offset and end offset are same. Index is set to seven, reservoir is zero, and the starting version is also true. And number of input rows is now shown as zero because we have processed all the data existing in our source delta table now, and there is nothing much left for processing. So now what I will do is <clears throat> I'll add another set of eight files into my source delta table, uh, which actually becomes uh, version one in your source delta table. Uh, so earlier we had only version zero. So now we have version one. And again, the file index uh, starts from zero to uh, seven. So now let us see what really happens with respect to our stream. So if you keep <clears throat> the stream running after addition of new set of eight files, uh, as you can see now, the start offset is same. We have observer version zero, index seven, and is starting version to true. But if you observe the end offset, <clears throat> the reservoir version is now changed to one and index is changed to four, and E starting version is set to false because the reservoir version one is not the <clears throat> starting version at which this stream was initially started. And number of input rows, we have 10,240 because uh, the index from seven to four represents file zero to file four in the version one of your source delta table. So in the subsequent batch, <clears throat> uh, we'll see uh, both the start offset and end offset having reservoir version one and index changed to four to seven. And we have like around 6,000 records being processed. So this is quite expected, but the interesting part is the next batch, like the last batch here. As you can see now, the indexes for start offset and end offset <clears throat> are both set to two, like the reservoir version is set to two and index is set to minus one. If you think about what we had in our source table, we only had two versions, right? Zero, version zero and version one. But uh, Spark has automatically incremented the <clears throat> version to the next possible version in your source delta table. And the index is set to minus one so that whenever the new file arrives, <clears throat> uh, it will be anyway index zero and it will be considered for processing. So if you observe, <clears throat> Uh, the index uh, doesn't change to minus one last time when we had no files to process. That is because uh, E starting version was set to true. Uh, but when we have E starting version set to false and we don't have any files to process, Sp uh, Spark will automatically increment uh, your reservoir version and index to the next possible uh, <clears throat> increment value. So this is how currently like the indexes are managed depending on the Boolean flag that is the starting version. The next section is a uh, streaming checkpoint. So now here we'll see the contents of the checkpoint directory. So before uh, going and checking the contents of the checkpoint directory, so let's take a step back and understand what we had initially. So we had this stream reading from a Delta table, processing using Spark and writing to a Delta table and also persisting the uh, progress of your stream into the checkpoint location. So if you take uh, different actions into consideration, what really happens underneath, we can divide this into three different steps. So one is construction of the micro batch. The second step is process processing the micro batch. And the third step is to commit micro batch. And this actually, <clears throat> uh, we try to display them inside notebook UI if you're running uh, streams in Databricks notebooks. So this is how it looks. Uh, here I have a stream which is actually stopped. Uh, that's why normally you see here it is showing a stream is inactive. But if you have the stream up and running, uh, you will see different stages of the stream, which is nothing but waiting for next trigger or uh, processing the new data, depending on the step that is currently in, in that particular moment. So with this, uh, let us quickly uh, 
get into action and see what really uh, gets committed into checkpoint location. Here we have three different uh, contents, offsets, metadata, and commits, and all the details in the checkpoint directory will be stored in JSON format. So first take the, let's take the offsets <clears throat> folder. Here you can see uh, one, one file will be generated inside offsets folder for every micro batch. And it will be generated whenever your batch starts. That is the step one. And we basically have two different details here, batch and streaming state details and the source details. But we'll focus only on the source details in this talk. So to understand more, uh, what I'm doing here is I've taken an example offset file, <clears throat> uh, which is offset slash zero, which is nothing but offset file generated for micro batch ID zero. Then we are taking the content of this file. Here I have uh, this content uh, written into the checkpoint location. So if we take the query progress log for this particular micro batch, uh, we have reservoir version zero, which is mapping uh, exactly to the content of the offsets file and also index and e starting version is also matching. So they directly map to each other and it represents the same thing what we discussed uh, with respect to query progress logs. As you can see, we had start offset null. Uh, that's not the reason why we are not seeing anything uh, for start offset here. Spark will always store <clears throat> the contents of the end offset. It will never store the content of the start offset because it is just redundant because anyway, you can go back and see the previous micro batch offset file if you really want. So the next uh, content is metadata folder. Uh, it is nothing but the stream ID itself, uh, which is what gets generated whenever your streaming query started at the first point. Uh, this is the unique ID what I was telling earlier. The next one is commits folder. Uh, this normally happens in the step three of the execution. And again, uh, one file per micro batch will be created under commits folder. And it, this file uh, doesn't contain much. It just represents the completion of the micro batch. So if this file is not generated, that normally represents the micro batches file. And Spark has to you know, uh, handle the previously failed batch first before uh, starting the new batch. So this is one of the reasons why uh, whenever you change the configuration options for your stream, it might not kick in uh, when you are restart the stream. So wait for first batch to complete uh, and see like whether from the second batch, all your new configs are picked up or not. So that brings us to the summary. <clears throat> so what we really understand uh, from the query progress logs, we uh, understand like different metrics, which explains uh, the stream execution patterns. And with respect to Delta streaming, we understood how we can map the uh, Delta transaction logs to the query progress logs. And with respect to stream checkpoints, we understand the importance of offsets and commits and how Spark uses them to uh, you know, track the stream progress and also bring the fault tolerance capabilities. Uh, before I conclude, uh, I just want to leave you with what is coming next. So in the next series of Delta Lake streaming under the hood, I'll be talking about other variations of Delta stream. So there are different modes like trigger ones and max bytes per trigger. And we'll be talking more about Delta table properties and what are the common issues that users face uh, when running Delta streams in production and what we advise as a mitigation strategies for them. So that's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy the summit and don't forget to give the feedback. Thank you.